Welcome back to another episode of Black Caution. I am Joshua Washington, and as always, I want to invite you all to participate in this real conversation that the fellas are having, all right? So with no further ado, let's get into it. Black Caution. We back at this is episode four, y'all, and we're gonna keep this conversation going. For those of you who are just tuning in, we've been having an extended conversation. I put the fellas together to kind of talk about all things under the sun. I got my boy T here with me, my boy Mello, Ron, and Rambo, and we are going to get into some politics and media oh. on, on this segment, uh, which Eesh. is everybody's favorite subject, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's top, top so five. here's what I want to know. The first question I have is when it comes to politics. There's a lot going on, but my question is very simple. How plugged in are you to that stuff? Why or why not? I would say I'm very plugged in because I own a business, and I think politics affect how my business make money and how it lose money and how I save money. Okay. And, and now that I see how, as a small business owner today, politics plays a huge part on every decision I make when it comes to hiring an employee, uh, how much money I'm making in a year, uh, how I spend my money as a business owner, and how it affects my business plan as far as growth if I wanna grow my company beyond a small business or whatnot. So I look at politics from that place, and I also look at politics from a community standpoint with the mentorship program I have with the young men, how the system itself, how it's been created to where these young men really don't have the opportunity to grow like they should because of the lack of resources that I believe politicians are not really shining light on that our young kids need today. Okay. So that's how I get plugged in okay. with politics. Who else? Uh, are you plugged in or not? I, I wouldn't. I, I'm plugged in where it's necessary. Okay. Um, so very similar to what Ramsey was sharing, I think, you know, it's important to just know what is affecting the community that you're serving in. Mm -hmm. So from a, a church leader standpoint, um, politics are going to affect your community. It affects the people that you serve in the community. And so in that regard, I have to kind of know what's going on. So I, I, I'm plugged in as far as what's happening in our world. Um, but, but I would say I'm not plugged in as some might be uh, where like I might go to it to get informed where people will go to it to be formed. Right. Oh, and so that's, that's a good word. Preach it. Now, bro. It. You preach it. preach that this Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> I'm preaching that this Sunday. No, no, no. That, that's next week. That's by by the way, week. where? where, where <laughs> it is. Oh, where's your church located? It's in Apopka, Florida. Apopka, Florida. Where exactly? If I want to get to your church, Sheila Road. So, um, Sheila. I, I, yeah. I know so, exactly so, 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 yeah. if y'all want to get some of that word right there, what yeah. is that? What's that again? Yeah, we go to we go to uh, politics sometimes to be formed. Um, I just want to go in there to be informed. And ah, say, yeah, look at what's that. going on in our world. Put that on your Twitter, bro. Are yeah. you being are you being formed or, or informed yeah. by politics? Yeah. T, what, what, are you I plugged in? Are you, bro? Like I I go into it to be informed because I'm an independent contractor as well. So those bylaws that you know that address are addressed to me. Those are the ones I need to be informed by. Okay. Just because the sign is red and it need to be blue, I don't, I don't get into that type of stuff. Oh, I see what you did there. I yeah, see what yeah. you did there. I like that. Red and the blue. How about you, Ron? I am so out of the loop. Yeah, you and me both, bro. I, I was <laughs> waiting on somebody. <laughs> Two out of five black men. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with politics. <laughs> see right you. <laughs> no, I'm just out of the loop of it. And it's just for me, I think nobody's coming to save you. I have that kind of mentality. So whatever's going on outside there, nobody's going to come knock on my door. And drop a bag of money for me, no matter if the politics. I don't. Bro, just, that's that's my thing, though, bro. I'm like, like how does it affect my day to day? And I get some people will say, well, well it is, Joshua. But I, I feel like at the local level, 
as long as you ain't, you know, in my house messing with my stuff, I but, you can be red, you can be red or blue, it don't matter. But I think that's the problem though. We gotta wait for it to show up in the house. Yeah. And we shouldn't we shouldn't deal with that. Like I think a lot of people don't understand that you're born to be a sacrifice for something. Mm. Right? You gotta be willing to fight for something before that something affects you. And I think that's the problem we're having today in society. We as a young culture, we don't want to deal with the hard conversations. Like we talk about what it means to be a man, what it means to deal with sex, what it means to deal with money. But nobody wants to talk about anything until it hits their home. If that person comes and that person takes every value of a dollar that you own, how are you going to feel? Oh, we're going to war. We're going to war. But imagine those who are already affected by it, mm. but they have no one that can stand for them, like yeah. a Martin Luther King, to voice. talk about how yeah. to bring change yeah. for the person who's affected. Yeah. Mm. It's the difference between being um, proactive versus react. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We don't want to react. We want to be proactive. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there is a. But you know. But the, here's the truth. E even though I can agree with everything my brother just said to it, there is a sense in which sometimes you just got to turn it off. That's the thing. You know, because it's. It can be very toxic as well. That's what it here. is. So I guess it really depends too. What kind of politics are we? Because you, you are right. You are yeah. right. It is. It yeah. is a proactive versus reactive thing. But for a lot of us, it's just exhaustion, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't want to get on there every day to hear about your allegiance to a to a party. Yeah. yeah. Because you're a Republican or Democrat or this yeah. or that. I want to know. And for a lot of our communities, we don't know how that impacts the next thing in our well, lives. Well, I think I think we're overwhelmed because we're not educated. That's true. the first thing. True, I think that's true. When you're true. not educated about anything, it's always stressful mm -hmm. because you feel like you have to choose to pick a side. Right. And I think that's where we are today as, as a society, right? We pay attention to the person rather than the policies and the principles. Mm -hmm. so, what it does, what it, so what does that do? It alters who we are. It alters the very being of our community. Mm -hmm. So if we don't be, if we're not educated, once again, if we're not informed, guess what's going to happen? We're going to have to conform. Because nobody is taking the time out to say, hello, here's politics. Where do you stand? What do you believe? What's your morals? What's your principles? And what's your integrity as a person? Sure. And if we don't take on that hat in today culture, then once again, we're just another black man dying. Well, that, but hold on. That's a good point, though. So let's, let's segue a little bit. Because one of the questions that I thought was real important, and it kind of blends in with the politic discussion, is how do you all feel about how black men are portrayed in the media, specifically young black men. How do you feel about young black men and our boys, how, how we're portrayed in the media? Because a lot of that happens on the political platform. I would start off, I mean, maybe because I'm really, I've become so, so, so very, I, I've become aware of these things. I think with the whole media standpoint from hip hop to what is portrayed on movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that affects us as black men when it comes to media. When you look at movies, we're always the drug dealers. We're always the ones fighting against each other. Bad guy. We're always mm -hmm. the one at the strip club spending <clears throat> money. We're always the one that the father leaving the house or beating on the mother, right? But then you look at the, the, the Caucasian side, <clears throat> family, gates, food, job, career, car. Boss. Boss. CEO. Right, but in yep. the black home, what do you see? So the media plays a huge part into who we are and what we do. Like George Floyd, can you imagine how many times they played that thing on TV and you as a black man got to sit there and watch it? How much of a mental part of you would be affected by that? Yeah. I, was, I was angry, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, it was, I was at a point to where I was just not having it from anybody. How many times did you watch it though? I can't even count. See? Social media, I can't even, I can't even count. So what, what, what impact do you think media is having on, 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 our, on the men and, and the portrayal of black men it has a huge impact because all they see of us is athletes or, or rappers or drug dealers mm -hmm. that's all that's all they portray us as they don't they don't portray you at joshua mentality they're not gonna broadcast joshua mentality yeah no, if i if yeah. i get hit they're gonna they're gonna have me that yeah. picture in high school when i was sitting up there yeah, that's right. <laughs> shooting yeah. black, the people, black people have always survived with the entertainment platform they're giving black people sure if you look at anything when it comes to a black person Entertainment is the main thing that they make money off of when it comes to a black person. Yeah. Football. Well, you, you know what? I think but, that's a good point. I think in our communities, that's, what's, that's what we see. I don't know if that's true, but, I, I, but it's definitely in our communities, that's the only thing we see. We see that if you're going to make it out of here, it's only going to be through media, creative, or sports. Or sports. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sports yeah. is number one. See, yeah. but that's why I think that even earlier when we talked about in another conversation about that exposure, uh, you know, just being able to um, help even the younger generation to be able to see there's more than what's on TV. 
um, there, there's more than what you see. Hey, listen, we got we got a slew of doctors. We got a whole group of lawyers. And, and so there's more that you can be than just an entertainer. Um, and, and I think it's important to expose them to that um, because the media is only concerned about what what's going to bring the, 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 the biggest amount of um, dollars at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and that's what they want to sell. Unfortunately, sometimes we sell ourselves out for that as well. It's true. So we don't care how we're being portrayed as long as we're getting paid. Yeah. But the long term effects of that is a whole kind of generation of people seeing us a certain way that really isn't even reality. Well, that speaks to perception. I want to throw this to you, Ron. How because we talked about portrayal, meaning how other people look at us, how other people look at us as black men. But how do you think it impacts our perception? The media impacts our, our perception as black men. Ron, you do trades. Yeah. You got exposed to a whole different world. Exposure leads to expansion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Y'all, so, y'all dropping clothes so, everywhere today. What you yeah. saying? <laughs> Exposure leads to expansion. Mm-hmm. The more That's we good. expose kids to other things besides sex, drugs, and money, mm-hmm. they'll be, That's you good. know. That's okay, good. time out. That's good. So, so we got to go there then. Because we got to go there about then. The about yeah. about nah. We, we yeah. were just, we were just <laughs> talking about in the break. Y'all don't get to see that behind the scenes stuff, but we, we brought up. What, Lil Nas X? Mm-hmm. And we're talking about, we got to talk about him specifically, okay. but we all grew up. We all grew up on, on hip hop. Mm-hmm. We all grew up, a lot of us within the same community, college communities, where, where it was trap, where it was, you know, that, that trunk was banging, and it was all money, sex, drugs, and women. Boy. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but to that point, though, how does that, how does that impact the perception, and how do we, how do we expand? How do we expose ourselves to something different outside of that so we can expand when that's the culture, bro? I, I, I think, just like you said, um, being exposed to something new, I think being receptive to other things that's out there. Because, you know, growing up, we, we, we look down on the person or the child that's not playing sports. That kid doesn't get enough attention. But in, in all actuality, that kid, we, we need to start shining light on him being a CEO or, or a boss and, and really diving into that because now if our kid isn't that superstar football player or basketball player and they don't make it to that next level, it's just like, and what are, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So, and, and when we're talking about me trading, I was, I, I've been exposed to something that's not common in our culture, mm. learning how to invest, mm. right? Learning how to make your money work for you. Yeah. And I think that's that's crazy because when I heard about investing, I always thought about old white people. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not, man, I'm not doing that. But now I'm I'm I've been exposed to something that's literally changing lives daily, and something that I think financial literacy in our culture Ooh. is very important. Ooh, that's a whole mm-hmm. stuff. like we, we it's a whole it's a totally different ball game now that I. A, I didn't come from a rich family, but a rich family would come from me. Okay, mm, come on. So, give me some. I hear you. Four out of five black men are going to drop a quote at some point. <laughs> but I, I think it's really shining light on you, you don't have to be this superstar, this this drug dealer, uh, yeah. just really tapping into you know the kid that just want to be a gamer. The, the, the kid that just wants to, you know, live freely, like embrace that. Like if we can embrace our kids that way that we embrace yeah. the, the student yeah. athlete and all that stuff, I, I think that's going to open us up to a wholly different, totally different that's ball good. game. So let's drop some game then. For, I, for the young man watching behind the camera, uh, I'm going to start with, with T on this side. I'm going to go all around. Drop some game on when it, when it happened for you, when that switch happened and what they can do. Because it's easy to say, you know, expose yourself to something different. But come on, man, we, if you, we all come from the hood. So we know if you don't give us that next step, it, it becomes overwhelming and, we, and you, you tap out because you stick to what you know. That's just human behavior, right? Mm-hmm. So you all being men who have been on both sides, drop some game on, on how they can expose themselves to something different. How you can expose yourself to something different is just cultivate yourself around individuals that have the same mindset that you have. Try to find those individuals. Uh, have open conversations. Uh, don't Make yourself vulnerable. Don't be don't be afraid to yeah. be uh, crying in front of somebody and uh, tell them that you're hurting or anything of that nature. So my thing is, if you tap into gaming, like he said earlier, tap into gaming and surround yourself with those individuals that have that same vision, it can come into something bigger than what it has it already started. So okay, Melo, what you think? Yeah, you know, I think um, I think um, to be a leader, you have to be a risk taker. Um, you you got to be willing to take a risk and even uh, fail at some point just to figure it out and then try it again. I, I think one of the risks 
to take is getting out of the fish bowl. You know, when you have a when you when you have a fish bowl and you put some fish in there, there's only so far they can go. They're circling around and they're staying within the same space. But when you take a fish out of a fish bowl and, and actually throw them into the ocean, they're going to see a lot more than they would ever been able to see when they've only been in the same kind of sphere of of influence. You know, uh, you you heard the statements of you know you'll be most like the nine eight to ten people that are that are closest to you I think that that's a true statement we've got to take the risk come get out of our comfort zone make friends with people that's not like you and, and you'll likely learn some things you never learned and, and go places you've never been and be exposed to things that you've never seen and so I think um, getting out of the fishbowl so that you can see what else is out there and, and build with uh, build some relationships with people that that are, are very different than you are that's so. good man what game would you drop Rambo? I would say um in order to live comfortable, you got to be willing to be uncomfortable. And you as a young person who's watching this, I think you got to start realizing that your future is ahead of you, right? That's why I would say strangers are my best friend, because they don't highlight my past. They, don't, they, they acknowledge your present, but they push you for your future. And if you can find those friends who's willing to stretch you, to make you uncomfortable, the only thing that's going to happen is that dream that you're believing in or that, that, that purpose that you see, you start to find yourself having a healthy rhythm to getting those things. So your circle of influence is huge. You got to be uncomfortable if you want to live comfortable with the things that you're believing for. All right. Facts. Wrong. I like that. I think for me, the most important thing is removing yourself from the situation. Um, a, a lot of times when we're, you know, trying to get into something new, it's our own self talking us out of it because we're just so afraid to, to get to, a point to where we're trying something different. So majority of the time, removing yourself from a situation, it allows you to, you know, excel in whatever you want to do. And you got to kind of think about it from this perspective. There's nothing on this earth that somebody hasn't made a million dollars off of. There's a, there's, there's somebody's taking out somebody's trash that's made a million dollars. Somebody made a million dollars off making light bulbs. Somebody made a million dollars off making shoes. So there's nothing for you to uh, get into a, a different atmosphere or, or a different space and become successful because somebody's already done it. And they say sin is believing. You have evident proof everywhere you go that you can be successful, but you gotta remove yourself out of that situation and get out of your way, honestly. Oh, that's good, that's good. Get that's real your, good. Get and out of your own way. Yeah, y'all mentioned a lot of things about community friendships. You mentioned money. Uh, as we close this segment, the last thing I wanna get into, I wanna know, what would you say? Let's get back to current state here. What would you say are the top three values in our community? If you just gave it a pure assessment, what would you say are the top three values right now that are most prevalent in the black community? Money, cars, and clothes. Yeah. <laughs> tell, me, tell me more. Money, you think that's the, that's the top three? If we did a, if we did a they, survey, that would be the top three most important. They want to look thing. the flyers, want to yep. drive the latest, and have the most. Uh, Keep up with the Joneses. That's it. And it's because, hey, you see the t-shirt right here? Target, baby. <laughs> Target, $7.99. Target. And it look good, too. Yeah. I, I know how to coordinate. Yeah. Okay, okay. So coordinate. what was the three again? Money's cars and clothes. Money, cars, and clothes. Who else? Top three. Uh, I'm gonna, if I'm going to do three things that are different than that, I would say whether they would say it exactly how I'm saying it, I think this would still be true of them if they could just articulate it. It would be, I think, I think they want authenticity. I think they want community. And I think they want security. Those are the three top values in our community. I, I think so. I think they would say it differently. But I think ultimately, especially in light of COVID reality and all this, I think they would want real relationship. They want people that they can be real with, that's going to be truthful to them, that they can be raw with. And I think also um, some kind of security, and just knowing that whether it's for their family, for their future, that there's, that there's a, 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 a hope. Okay, Ron, yeah. top three, based on your, your, your perception. Um, I, think, I think I'm going with T, but I think I remove clothes and add sex. Money, sex, and, and, and uh, what was the third one? It was money. Cars sex. and sex. Yeah. Money, cars, and sex. Wow. Money. What, a, what a combination. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it is because I, I think, and why I put implemented sex into that is because it's all around us. It's like you can't get away from it yeah, at this point. True. It's that's so true. hard to get away from. And, and now that we are so obsessible to, you know, the Internet and social media, that's it. 
Yeah. Like, and it's it's sad, and it's gonna take us to kind of break that, man, for real. Like, real talk. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you, bro. Rambo. Um, I would say dreams, affirmation, and goals. Those um, are the top I, three values. Yeah. Most prevalent. Yeah, because I hear a lot of the kids say, you know, I'm trying to live the dream. And when they, they attach that to sports, football, when you ask every kid what you want to become, I want to be a football player, and that person don't even wake up 5 in the morning and do 10 push-ups, yeah, yeah. right? And then you got affirmation. They struggle with real relationship, love. What does that look like? You know, when you affirm them and say, hey, great job today, they're like, man, what you talking about? Yeah. You know, so it's almost like one of those, that psychic attitude, like, yo, yeah. you know, I don't even know how to receive this, but it's affirmation. Yeah, and right. then the other that's thing right. is goals. They, they, once our kids today learn the system of goals, applying goals to everyday life, no matter what industry or system they're in, they'll be successful. They can reach that, that dream. They will receive affirmations. But that's why I look at it, dreams, affirmation, and goals. When if those values we hold on to and we really shape our communities based off that, man, look here. Whether it's money, sex, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, we'll defeat that by teaching them a real system that teach about self-value. Because, cause, yeah, because those things are what they're, the money, cars, whatever, they're saying they want that. I think that that's the communicated value. Yeah. But I think ultimately it's, it's, it's the other thing. Okay, what, what's, what's, what's deeper? Something deeper is leading you to, you, you're going after this, but you, you want something more than this. Yeah, so. I love it. I love it, man. Oh, man, that was, that was good. I think we're going to continue this into actually episode, uh, the next episode. So I, I appreciate you fellas being honest, man, and being open. And I want to know, you, you listening to this conversation Put it in the comments, what do you think are the top three values within the black community? Or if you're not black, maybe the community at large. What do you see from people within our age group? These are, these are young men uh, talking about these topics. So I want to hear from you, and I'll see you on the next episode. Uh, real talk, real men. Uh, you've been listening to Black Caution. Hey, listen, thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss an episode. We want you to participate in this real conversation, all right? So we'll see you next time. Black Caution. <laughs>